Hello everyone, it's Brett here, Lionheart84, and I wanted to do a slightly more in-depth video than usual about pineapple guavas or Fijoa. Um, Latin name is Acca siloiana, and why I feel it's the fruit that everybody should be trying to grow in their garden if you live in a cool, temperate climate like the UK. Um, now, I would just say my personal experiences with growing these in the southeast of England so I can't be sure what sort of results you would get if you lived up in say Scotland for example but I have got friends that are successfully getting these to fruit in uh, the Midlands and certainly in the sort of Manchester and Liverpool area so I see no reason why if you had a sheltered location why you shouldn't be able to have a go at these even as far north as Scotland. Now the reason I think these uh, plants and I'll show you a few of them are a win-win is if you wish to grow something subtropical um, and a bit exotic rather than the normal gooseberries, red currants, blackberries, raspberries, apples, pears these really really tick a lot of boxes for me um, they're quite a compact bush as you can see from the ones i've got here they seem to be tolerant of almost almost all soil types as far as i can see they don't seem to be bothered whether it's acidic or slightly alkaline whether it's sandy or, or clay or peaty they seem to do as well in the ground as they do in pots um, I've got some in pots here as well need to have decent sized pots for them because they do like to have a reasonable root run but you can see that my plants um, are flowering quite nicely now now they start flowering normally within two or three years of planting but that will depend on the size plant and the variety in your growing conditions um, I, I mean I've seen a plant bought from a supplier that was probably only 12 inches 30 centimeters tall that's produced say a single flower bud but obviously um, it will depend on the source for the plants and how they've been growing. Um, a lot of the pineapple guavas we buy in this country from sort of online sellers and nurseries are not named varieties. They're like this plant here, which was the very first one I got, which wasn't a named variety. I just bought it from an online seller. Um, now, you don't know whether these plants have been growing... Uh, well they will have been grown from seed at some stage or other but they're most likely reproduced or propagated by cuttings from an unnamed variety that originally would have been grown from seed now you could be lucky and obviously you could buy an unnamed plant from an online seller which by chance has originated from is actually a triumph or a mammoth and one of the named varieties somewhere in the course of being grown over the years and cuttings exchanged uh, the fact that it was a name variety has been lost but you you could be lucky and i know joe's got an unnamed variety that produces extremely good fruit so it's most likely it's actually a mammoth or triumph or another one of the name cultivars rather than the seedling one now this one here which is what i call a seedling plant has been very useful for me for using as a pollinator because the fruits on this are pretty poor quality to be honest they're round and they rarely get bigger than a walnut size so it, it wouldn't be a plant that you would buy for the fruits however it produces plenty of flowers and it means because it's not one that I need to keep for the fruits I simply remove the flowers and take the flowers around and use them to pollinate my name varieties however it will produce fruits and perhaps this year you can see some have already looked as if they're probably set. Perhaps this year it will produce some slightly better fruits. Um, now, as I said, this is an unnamed cultivar and the fruits are probably about the size of walnuts, perhaps as big as golf balls if we had a good year. Um, but you can still eat the petals off it. Um, the petals are perfectly edible on these flowers, which is one of the benefits of them. I was going to run through the benefits of them. Uh, firstly they're evergreen 
so you've got a very attractive evergreen bush in your garden it's not a deciduous plant secondly they produce these stunning exotic almost orchid like flowers reasonably profusely once the plant's been in for three or four years um, plus you can eat the petals on them and eating the petals if you pick these off does not affect the ability of the, the flower to produce fruits there's one of the petals there um, it does not affect the ability they're a lovely sort of pink color and they're quite soft it does not affect the ability of the plant to, pro to produce fruits because you're only removing the petals from the outside of the flower so you can still pollinate the plants and this one is mammoth and hopefully gets fruits now <clears throat> the, some of the pros and cons of them uh, the plants are relatively hardy they seem to survive minus seven minus eight without any issues at all being covered in snow is not a problem they cope well with drought although you have got to watch the ones in the pots because obviously the ones in the pots are relying on you for water and i do get wilting on the ones i've got in containers if we haven't had rain for a while and they need watering um, they seem to cope quite nicely with minus 10 at minus 10 you will get quite often damage to the tips of the shoots and burnt leaves but it doesn't seem to die back too far and the woody stems seem to be fine even at minus 10 and i've heard of people in uh, colder countries where the plants have survived minus 14 minus 15 with some with a reasonable amount of dieback but they come back very strongly from the woody stems lower down so certainly i can't see anywhere in the uk unless you're at obviously higher altitudes where there would be a serious problem with the um, with the plant getting damaged and the other thing is you can cut them back very hard as i have done with this triumph I took this right back and it's absolutely put out a massive new growth since April absolutely everywhere it's also flowered heavily again and hopefully we'll get some um, we'll get some fruit set on this now the other thing to think about is the actual fruit types and flavors themselves um, to me I've now tried about four or five different varieties and the fruits don't taste an awful lot of difference to me there is some variation in the texture of the fruit some of them have grainier flesh than others and some of them have thinner skin if they've got the thinner skin um, you can actually quite happily eat the skin without it having any bitterness to it um, if you get the ones with a thicker rougher skin it tends to be a little bit bitter and then i prefer to just cut the fruits in half a bit like an egg and then scoop out the uh, the flesh now they definitely improve with time as the plants mature the fruits are gradually getting bigger they sort of vary in size from a small obviously from a from a golf ball size up to a small egg and right up to a large egg or a large kiwi fruit i can't remember what my record size fruit is so far um, but i think it's probably it was about 90 or 100 um, <clears throat> grams they're virtually pest free they do sometimes get these little um the little caterpillars that bind the leaves together and uh sit inside the leaves with webs but they don't generally do too much harm to the plant they don't seem to get any green fly scale insects mealybugs um or indeed any other pest on them that i can determine at the moment the flowers do seem to attract hoverflies i haven't seen any bees or butterflies or moths or other types of insects on them not bumblebees or wasps but they certainly have hoverflies on them but i tend to prefer to try and hand pollinate them either by removing the flowers from a plant like this one and then walking around and brushing the pollen from the the flower that i've got in my hand onto the flowers on other plants or of course you can use a nice large soft brush and just gradually brush the pollen and move it round from one plant to the other and transfer the pollen between as many plants as possible to get fruit set now as you can see they've got these beautiful sort of um oval shaped 
sort of almost olivey green leaves with an attractive silver back so they're a lovely shrub in their own right even if you don't get fruits on them but if you can successfully find plants of a different genetic background so obviously if you were going to buy unnamed ones from uh, a regular online seller you really would want to be buying one from one half of the country and uh, one from the other side of the country in the hope that they've come from a different genetic background but if you can find name varieties which you can online there's more nurseries starting to reproduce them and it's more chance of getting things like um, Triumph, Mammoth, Gemini, Unique, perhaps Coolidge. Coolidge is, I believe, one of the self-fertile ones because there are one or two varieties that are actually quite nicely self-fertile. Some of the others have very poor fruit set if you've only got one. So it would pay you to have two plants. But as you can see, they're not particularly large. They've also, another benefit they have... If you can see, it's a very attractive peely bark. Um, I think I should point out, incidentally, that although they're called pineapple guavas, as well as fijoa, or fijoa, I think it's a soft J actually, like the Spanish pronunciation. <coughs> although they are called pineapple guavas, they are not in any shape or form actual guavas. They get their name because they're quite similar looking to green oval guavas um, and they perhaps to some people have a kind of a pineapple and guava combined taste but actually years ago they used to call these the fruit salad tree because the actual fruits from variety variety do vary a little bit a um, little bit pineapple -y, a little bit citrusy i find they have quite a sort of a medicinal um aromatic medicinal scent or smell to them which I quite like and actually it's grown on me a lot I've really taken a liking to them now but what I, the, what I was going to point out was they are actually in the same genus as guavas they're in the Myrtaceae family so they are related to myrtles as are guavas but whereas guavas are actually Pisidium uh, these of course are Acca. They used to be called Fijoa Siloiana and they've changed, the, they reclassified them as Acca. So um, they can be quite a little bit sparse and spindly if you let them get like this as I have with this one. I decided not to cut this one back hard this year because I wanted it to flower heavily which it has done because this is another variety. This one is Gemini and I've only had one fruit off this now the fruits as I said do vary a little bit in the size and variety to variety some of them produce fruits that are as big as very large kiwis and others tend to be smaller they also vary in shape some of them are more torpedo shaped or oval and some of them are more rounded so there is some variation in them and you may if you manage to get two or three varieties come across them but um, I, I really think this is going to be if not it won't be the fruit of the future because you do need a reasonable amount of warmth they flower for me from really the beginning of July through to probably the end of August they're quite lengthy flowers and the varieties do flower at slightly different times although that will depend on the maturity of the plant you can see I've got one over the back there that's covered in flowers at the moment and the fruits tend to ripen from what I have found at the moment from the end of October into November now the only downside of them ripening that late we seem to be okay mostly in the southeast because we don't tend to get such bad early frosts but if you were to get bad frosts in November and your fruits weren't ready I think it's quite likely that the fruits could freeze and might be damaged so you might have to pick them prematurely you don't have to pick the fruits at all the fruits drop when they're at peak ripeness so um, when when they start to fall on the ground is when I pick them I don't pick them off the tree although I might consider doing that if we had really really cold weather forecasts but at the moment I'm quite happy to let them drop on the ground they don't seem to be attacked by snails and other creatures on the ground birds seem to have no interest in them whatsoever which is another piece of very good news um, I haven't had the birds so far 
touch the fruits at all so that's another bonus for them and as I said they tend to ripen depending on varieties over a period of about three or four weeks from late October to late November um, you can leave the fruits in your fruit bowl for a few days or you can put them in the fridge and they'll last two or three weeks um, however they're not commonly sold here in the shops because they don't travel well and they mostly are grown commercially in the in in South America and uh, New Zealand and it's probably too far to ship them from New Zealand to get them over here I have bought them in specialist market shops online and you can buy them from some of the online fruit selling companies but basically if you don't grow your own you're quite likely never to get to taste them but I mean they really are as I said they're not a large plant unless you grow let them grow into a large tree you can keep them compact in a plant border you can grow them as a standalone specimen in your lawn as I said they're evergreen they've got fabulous flowers on them which flower over a period of about two months in summer um, the leaves are extremely attractive the bark's extremely attractive they don't get any pests all of them they're they're definitely hardy to minus 10 without major problems you should try and plant them in a sunny position because you want to encourage the flowers to obviously open and you want to increase your chances of getting decent sized edible fruits i've seen people who grow them in polytunnels and greenhouses which means that they will definitely flower earlier and they'll fruit earlier and probably you'll get bigger fruits because it seems to me that the fruits carry on developing while the weather is warm enough then as the weather starts to cool down the fruits uh, the fruits start to ripen and fall off the plant so i would imagine that if you had a longer growing season you'd probably get larger fruits but i really wanted to sing the praises of them because i think these pineapple guavas are a plant that everybody should have a go of go at if they can get them and grow them in their garden you might have to wait three four five years for the flowers to appear it just depends if you're lucky but if they've been grown from cuttings of a named variety um, by a professional nursery I've found that the named varieties tend to flower uh, earlier because they obviously the cuttings have come from a mature flowering plant this is often the case you can graft them um, I haven't tried but I know people have tried them I've got about I've got eight varieties which I believe is every variety that it's possible to have in the UK there are some very interesting looking uh, New Zealand varieties which appear to produce fruits double the size of any of the varieties we get here however that might be climate related as well and perhaps if they were growing here they wouldn't produce fruits that large but if you can imagine a fruit the size of um, sort of 200 grams instead of 100 grams would be very very impressive um, I suppose when I've got six or seven fruits all ripe at the same time I'll better sit down and do a, a proper tasting and see if I can determine more difference between them but for me the the pleasure these give in flowers and watching the fruits develop uh, is absolutely fantastic and I, I'm hoping that more people gradually will have a go at growing one of these even if it's just one or two in a container in a garden if you're very tight for space like I am as I said I've managed to squeeze in eight of them in containers or in grounds and so far they've been problem free pest free and I'll start to produce fruits consistently for me I don't know if they have off years they might do and I suppose if they got did catch a disease or got damaged by seriously cold weather that might hold them back for a year but I think if you've got as many as I've got probably even if you uh, even if you did have a couple that didn't perform or flower at all you'd still have another one or two that would flower and fruit so that's my long rambling video talking about the pros and cons of pineapple guavas as far as I'm concerned it's virtually all pros it's just a case of being patient until you get your first fruits but they may not be to everybody's taste because they have got that sort of medicinal aromatic scent to the fruit but it's not unpleasant and I'm 
really used to it but um, as I said look at this lovely bark which interestingly is typical of the myrtle family and guavas so you can see why people get confused by them but there's no way would a tropical guava survive outside in this country and um, the first frost we get would uh, ruin it but you can see this one's now been flowering for at least three weeks and it's still got plenty more flower buds coming out which are still to open so we're going to have flowers on this for another three or four weeks at least and if some of these set I should get quite a decent crop of fruits on. I'm going to leave it here because I want it to get plenty of sun if I stick it amongst all the other plants obviously it might struggle a little bit so that is my promotional video for pineapple guavas Joas, Acca siloiana. If you haven't got one and you don't live in a really horrific area climate wise with really difficult growing conditions, I can highly recommend buying one if only for the uh, decorative appearance of it. Looking at these fabulous flowers, and as I said, if you like your healthy green foods you can pick the petals and eat them and as I said there uh, I've had no pests ever on any of my pineapple guavas snails don't touch them slugs don't touch them birds don't touch the fruits or the flowers uh, no scale insect no green fly no mealy bugs nothing whatsoever just occasionally you get one of those little caterpillars that sort of sticks the leaves together but I mean you're only talking about look there's one there probably all they do is stick a couple of leaves together but it doesn't do any harm to the plant anyway thanks for uh, listening to me on that video I hope it's going to inspire you to uh, get one much appreciate it if you've managed to stick with me through the video please do uh, give the video a thumbs up and share it if you think other people should know about these uh, wonderful evergreen subtropicals that survive in a cool temperate climate please do subscribe to my channel and remember to click on the bell if you'd like updates on when new videos come out i'll catch up with you in my next shorter video brett out for now